Welcome to Beat Diabetes. On today's program, we'll take a look at blood sugar meters. Why do you use them? How do you use them? Are they accurate? Do fingers matter? I'll be poking my fingers to show you the answers. Well, if you've seen many of my videos, you know that I strongly emphasize using a blood sugar meter to help you in your quest to defeat diabetes. I couldn't even imagine how many times I've poked my fingers, drawn a drop of blood, and measured my glucose levels over the last 20 years. But it has been a lot. Well, what's the point? Testing your glucose has two main points. The first is information. Knowledge is power. The more you know about your glucose levels, the better equipped you'll be to overcome diabetes. Imagine trying to drive a car with a blindfold over your eyes. You would crash your car in seconds. Without the constant feedback provided by your eyes, you couldn't possibly keep your car on the road and within the proper lane. And without the feedback of your blood sugar meter, you couldn't possibly keep your blood sugar in line either. But a glucose meter does not only provide you with information, it also provides you with motivation. When I see those numbers appear on the screen of my meter, I'm either being rewarded for being good or punished for being bad. If I go out to a pizza restaurant and eat five slices of thick crust pizza and down it all with a large Coca-Cola and then test my blood sugar an hour later, and I see a great big fat 288 on the screen, well, I've just been given both a lesson and a spanking. I am sick at heart. I know my numbers are terrible and that my body is experiencing trauma, stress, and damage by that high blood sugar. But when I go out the next evening and eat a cob salad and a slice of cheese and drink lemon water and then test myself an hour later and see a beautiful 118, well, I'm given another lesson and a reward. My blood sugar meter is patting me on the back and saying, Atta boy, you're doing good. And my motivation goes through the roof to eat more meals like that and receive more positive reinforcement from my trusty little glucose meter. But let's say I go out those two nights and eat those two meals, the pizza and soda one night and the salad and lemon water the next night, but I don't test my glucose. Well, I have no clue what they've done to my blood sugar levels. I don't feel that much different. And if that's my standard policy, just eating whatever I like and never testing my glucose, I will go through life completely ignorant and completely unmotivated. Now, some people say ignorance is bliss, but in this case, ignorance is deadly. I am literally destroying my body by the foods I put in my mouth. When I first experienced blood sugar problems, I didn't go out and buy the most expensive meters on the market. I didn't have the money, and I usually bought about the cheapest ones I could find, or maybe one notch above the cheapest ones. They may not have been perfectly accurate, but they did the trick for me. They consistently showed me that high-carb meals raised my blood sugar a lot, medium-carb meals raised it quite a bit, and low-carb meals raised it hardly at all. Now, I may not be the brightest bulb in the pack, but I wasn't so stupid that I couldn't figure out what to do to get my glucose levels in line. I knew I simply needed to seriously restrict my carb intake, and those glucose levels should go down, and of course, that's exactly what happened. Today, I'm going to be doing some glucose tests on myself and comparing several different meters. No glucose meters are perfectly accurate, but some are definitely better than others. One way to discover some of the better ones is simply to get on the internet and Google which blood sugar meters are the most accurate and just read some of the tests and various studies that have been done. The other factor, of course, that we have to consider is not only accuracy, but the cost. It's no good having the number one rated glucose meter if the strips are so expensive you can only afford to test yourself every other Christmas. Well, for today's test, I have four different meters. 
the freestyle light, which Dr. Richard Bernstein recommends, and when he recommends something, that carries a lot of weight with me. Plus, in the past, this meter has given me consistent readings. Also, I have the Freestyle Precision Neo, which seems to be fairly accurate, and I have depended on that. You've seen it in a lot of the tests that Benedict and I have done. And its strips sell for much cheaper than the Freestyle Light. I also have this Contour Next meter, which gets good marks for both accuracy and affordability, and I found that it works pretty well. And then last, I have a lowly Walmart meter called the Relyon Premier Classic, which is cheap and has cheap test strips. Okay, well, let's talk about the various parts that are involved in a glucose test. First, of course, you have your glucose meter, but that meter is not going to do much if you don't have some other parts with it. Another part you'll need is your glucose lancing device, or just your lancing device. Uh, this one is a cheap Walmart brand. Usually when you buy a meter, it'll come with a lancing device. And uh, then you'll also need little lancets, kind of a cute name for these little fellas. This is a lancet. This is a lancing device. This is a lancet. This has got the little tiny needle that you're going to poke your finger with. So your lancing device, your glucose meter, your lancet, then you'll need strips, and uh, different meters require different strips. The lancets will work in pretty much any lancing device, but these strips will not work in anything except what they're made for. So this one is the rely on strips. It will only work with this particular blood sugar device. There are some uh, brands that may have two or three different versions of their meters, and they'll all use the same strip, but you can't go outside your brand name. So uh, this one uh, relates to the Freestyle Light, which is this one. If I tried it in any of the others, it wouldn't work. So you got your meter, your lancing device, your lancets, your uh, test strips. One other thing you need is something like this. Uh, this is just a piece of a paper towel, or you can use a piece of toilet paper or whatever to wipe your finger after you create your drop of blood. Now, Let's talk about how to actually test. And what you're going to do, you know, you may get your, your, lance, your new lancing device, your new meter, and you've got your strips, you're ready to go, and uh, you're going to have to cock your uh, lancing device by pulling it back, and then you press on a certain button, and it will go. They almost all work the same way. Pull back the, the rear part of it, press the button, bam, the needle will shoot forward and give you a little stick in your finger. But if you've just bought everything and brought it home and you're ready to try and you give yourself a poke, you say, well, I don't feel anything. Try it again. I don't feel anything. I don't see any blood. What's going on? <laughs> well, what's going on is uh, they don't come preloaded. So if you pull off the front, some of you'll have to screw a little bit and then pull. Others, you can just pull straight off. This one, you just pull off. Uh, there's nothing in it. So you're going to have to take one of these uh, lancets, and most all lancets will fit almost all other uh, lancing devices. And you're going to, each one has a little ridge on the lancet, and inside your device, it's going to have a little gap, and you stick the ridge in the gap. Now you notice it's got a round top. The round top has to be twisted and pulled off so that the needle shows. Then you simply put it back, and now you are in business. Now, before I actually show you basically how you do this, let me say some people get all the stuff and they're ready to go and they say, it doesn't work. I can't get, <laughs> I can't get uh, it to, to stick me or my meter's not working right. Uh, what's going on? This is a very simple procedure. It's not hard, but there are two mistakes some people will make. One will be that when they want to test themselves, they're a little nervous about sticking themselves, and so they don't want to push it too hard against their finger, and they'll kind of put it as lightly as they can until it barely touches their finger. Then they push, and it doesn't create enough of a, a hole in your finger, so to speak, and uh, there's not going to be much blood. There may be just the tiniest little bit, and your meter may not be able to read it. So number one thing, and probably the number one problem, is you, you don't put that right firmly up against your finger. you got to be a man about it, or be a woman, and just jam that baby right up against your finger and give it a punch. 
And the other reason that people have problems is they don't know how to pinch. They haven't yet learned how to pinch their finger. Once you stick it and you pull it off, you say, well, I don't see any blood. You may not. In fact, probably you won't. Or maybe you'll see the tiniest little bit. You got to take your two fingers and get around the area where you just punched and give it a good squeeze. Don't have your fingers straight up because gravity is working against you. Have it down or have it sideways. Give it a squeeze with those two fingers, thumb and the forefinger, and you'll squeeze a nice fat drop of blood out without any problem. So the two problems uh, that can be resolved, number one, hold it firm against your finger, uh, be a man about it, be a woman. Number two, give it a good pinch after you've done it and you will get a drop of blood. So let me give you a sample blood sugar test before we start measuring these against one another. Let's uh, use the freestyle light. And here are the strips that go with it. We'll stick one in. The very first step you want to do is go ahead and load your meter with your strip. So you got to know which side goes in. I guess that could be another mistake, but usually you'll see some bars on the back. That's going to go down and it's going to go in. So we're going to stick this in until it can't go in any further. And it will usually show you a little drop of blood blinking or something similar to that. And that tells you it's ready to get some blood. Now, the meter is, is ready to go, and you have to cock your lancing device so it's ready to stick you. Have your little tissue close so you can wipe the blood off. And remember to hold it firm against your finger. Let's try this finger this time. Hold it firm, give it a stab, and then you see, I don't see anything much, just a tiny little drop, but by squeezing, I get a nice fat drop of blood. So that means I'm ready to go. I'll take this, uh, the meter, and I will stick it again. This one actually loads from the side. I'll touch the blood until I hear a beep. And there's the beep. I will wipe the blood off while I'm waiting. And I got a 109. 109, uh, I had a meal a couple hours ago, so it hadn't all dropped down to my base level, but 109 isn't terrible. So a 109 for my glucose, and that's how you do it. Now, the question is, the question is, how will these measure against each other? How indeed? Well, at this point, I have to tell you that you'll have to wait for next Friday to see the tests of meter versus meter and finger versus finger. Now, I had intended to make this just one video, and I recorded it that way. But when I looked at the footage that I'd recorded on my computer, I realized it was going to make for a video that was just too long. I've found that many YouTube viewers are some of the most impatient people in the world. Now, not you, but some of those other people. They want to click on a video and watch a few brief minutes and learn all there is to learn. They remind me of Joe Friday, the TV police detective who loved to tell people just the facts. Well, I've never been a just the facts kind of a guy, and I love to share illustrations and personal stories from my life and sometimes just make small talk with my wife, Benedicta. Some people love it, and for some it just drives them crazy. Anyway, in this case, I decided that rather than make one longer video on blood sugar meters, I would split it up into two shorter videos. So we'll get to the actual tests in a week. There is one important point, though, that I failed to mention in talking about sticking your fingers with a lancing device. Every lancing device that I've ever used comes with a sort of a mechanism on the front that enables you to set the depth that the needle will penetrate your finger. So if you have thin skin, you can set it at its lightest depth, usually a 1, or if you're thick skin, you can set it at a 5 and the needle will go deeper. Obviously, there's no need to stick yourself any deeper than is necessary, and for most people, setting the needle depth at 2 or 3 will work fine. Remember, your glucose meter is your friend, and he can do things for you in terms of information and motivation that no medical expert can. Mike, the blood sugar meter, essentially gave me the diet that I eat today. Yes, I read books, I watch videos, I try to learn all I can. And a great endocrinologist can be a wonderful partner in overcoming diabetes. 
but nothing and no one can take the place of your little friend, your glucose meter, in determining the foods and meals that work for you and which ones are definitely off limits. For most of us, this will involve post-meal testing in about one to one and a half hours after eating our last bite to discover just how high any particular food will raise our blood sugar. Okay, that's it for now. Hope you found this helpful. Be sure and come back next week to learn how these four meters did against each other and how reliable blood sugar meters are in general. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up so other diabetics can benefit from it as YouTube promotes it more widely. They do pay attention to how many likes a video gets as well as how long people watch it. And don't forget to subscribe and then click the little bell icon so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. God bless. See you again soon.